Hello everyone and it is Jess. Welcome back to my channel and a very happy new year to you all. It is now 2022 which is absolutely terrifying and I don't know how to process this information. <laughs> it is a new year and as always a new year comes new challenges, new things that I want to do and most importantly new books that I want to read and I'm going to be talking about my 2022 reading plans and my January TBR so let's just get into it. I have a very large glass of Prosecco because it's just been one of those days. Um, I currently do not have any heating or hot water which is why I am wearing this very ridiculous and oversized uh, hoodie, blanket hoodie. My boyfriend got me this for Christmas which is uh, very convenient because our boiler just went kaput on Christmas Day so it's very cold in the house right now which is always fun. <laughs> Everything just goes wrong at this time of the year I swear like my work is currently closed because of Covid and you know it's just yeah it's just it's just one of those it's one of those times of the year. <laughs> But we're not going to focus on the negativity today, let's focus on the positive and all of the things that I am excited about. So throughout January I will be posting um, my 2021 review videos, all the books that I read, my favourite books, worst books, all of that lovely stuff that's coming up in the next few weeks. But today I just want to start by talking about my plans for 2022 in terms of reading. I've been thinking a lot about this over the last uh, month or so because um, my stance on reading um, and how I approach reading and all of that has changed drastically in the last uh, probably like three or four months or so. Um, and so I have decided that I'm not really going to give myself any goals in terms of reading you know any specific goals because I didn't stick to them last year and also because I don't want to put pressure on myself reading is a hobby something that I do for fun you know I love it and there have been times when I feel like I have to read um and I do it because I feel like I need to uh, you know reach a certain goal or have something to talk about with you guys or whatever and then I just lose all interest in it which I think you can all relate to so I don't want to be putting too much pressure on myself I just want to read and I just want to have fun with it um, so I do have my yearly goal again which I have just kept at 52 books um, I did read a lot of books in 2021 I suppressed my goal I read over 80 books and I was only aiming for 52 uh, so I'm very pleased with myself that's the most I've ever read in a year um, and most of that is because of lockdown and just being stuck at home not having anything else to do um, so I don't know what this year is gonna be like so I'm just going to keep it at 52 books, that's one book a week which is, you know, pretty realistic. Um, and again, I just want to keep uh, diversifying my reading. This is something actually, I just want to have another sip of wine first. Um, it's really nice. This is something that I have been thinking about a lot as well because obviously everyone is making more of an effort to read more diverse books which is fantastic you know and it's something that everybody should be doing and I highly encourage it um, and it's something that I want to do um, and I want to continue to do but when I think about diversity I want to be thinking more outside of the box 
And yes, reading diversely means reading books by people of colour, uh, by members of the LGBTQ plus community, uh, by disabled authors, you know, people from all around the world and all walks of life who have had very different experiences to my own. Um, you know, because I learn so much from those books and from those people. And it's just so important that we support those authors um, and, you know, take in what we're reading and learning from it as well. But I also want to read books beyond that. So for me, reading diversely doesn't just mean reading diverse books. To me, it also means reading more non-fiction books on a variety of different topics. I am interested in so many different things and I just want to read more books on politics, on race, on feminism, on the environment. You know, climate change is a big one that I'm really interested in right now and I want to read more of. Um, history, you know, just art, culture, just all these different subjects I want to be reading more of. Um, and then also different genres. I'm starting to branch out into literary fiction, which I never thought I would do, but I have read a couple of books in that genre that I have really liked. Um, so, you know, just trying out different genres that are not necessarily in my comfort zone, things I wouldn't normally pick up, um, and discover new books and topics that way. And also how I'm reading, you know, I don't want to just be reading physical books you know I've got an ebook now so I can read um, ebooks and you know use the library and audiobooks and all of that that's my aim pretty much for this year um, and I'm very excited because there are flipping loads I nearly swore <laughs> I'm trying not to swear as much this year uh, there are loads of books that I'm very excited for, that fulfil all of the things that I am looking for in reading. And then I think my other main goal for 2022 when it comes to reading is just being more mindful of how I consume uh, my literature and trying to be a more ecologically friendly reader. And I was looking at this online and looking at how other readers go about doing this because it's not something that I see a lot of on the internet at the moment. Booktube and Bookstagram is very kind of um, consumer heavy. I wanna say, you know, we all love buying books. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And we all have a book buying problem, you know, we'll buy 10 books, we'll put them on our shelves, we won't read them for ages, and then we go and buy more books and it just accumulates, you know, and I, I am very guilty of that. And so this year I want to stop buying books, if I can help it, or buying books new, at least. There are a few exceptions, but I don't want to be, you know, going over the top as my boyfriend has called it in the past. I've looked at ways in which I can do this and how I can be more mindful of the planet when it comes to reading. And one of the best ways that I can do that is by using my local library. So I do have a library card. I've had one for ages. It was a bit difficult to get to the library last year because of lockdowns and it was closed which was very unfortunate because I had made the decision to start using my library more and then but I've been going to the library a little bit more um, in the past few weeks and I have been learning out books and I think it's going to be one of the best ways for me to help the planet by not buying so many books but also you know quenching my thirst for knowledge and for enjoyment while also supporting my local library because libraries at the minute are struggling and they do need a lot of help um and so just being there and using their services because it's free you know it is free um and i'm very lucky to have a library card and to have access to a library that's not too far away from me um you know i want to I want to support them and I think that's a great way for me to start being an ecologically friendly reader um, and it's also an excuse for me to get out and walk. I need the exercise, <laughs> I need to stop using my car as much, my library isn't that far away so you know 
I can go to the library, loan out some books, do my food shop on the way back, and I've saved on petrol, and, you know, I haven't, you know, killed the earth a little bit more with car fumes and stuff, so there's that. And then also just getting books second hand. I've been doing a lot of book swaps with with uh, friends lately, which has been uh, really nice. I went to a friend's house um, a couple of months ago. They had loads of books they wanted to get rid of. So I took a few from their piles. They're on my shelves now. And I just, I don't know when I'm gonna read them, but they're there. Um, and then they also came round to my house not too long ago and looked through some books that I was planning to get rid of. Um, and they took them home. So that's another thing that I wanna do just lending books to people or borrowing books from people and swapping books and all of that i've been using um the book swap group on facebook as well that's been a really great a great way for me to get books on the cheap and then also just using my kindle because this has ever since i've had this this has just completely changed the way i read and i do read a lot quicker on kindle i know a lot of people have um said that themselves and i don't really know why um but i do i get through books really quickly on my kindle um but this is amazing because it doesn't use much energy i charge this about once a week if that probably like once every 10 days sometimes um and i can read this anywhere anytime at night I don't have to put the lights on. I can just sit in the dark and read. So, you know, I'm not wasting unnecessary electricity, which is also a great way to save the planet. So I wanna be using this more. Um, we're gonna do it. We are gonna do this thing and I'm very excited. So there are, there are definitely more ways that I can be an ecologically friendly reader in 2022. And I'm going to be researching those things um, and trying them out. But yeah, I just want to be a bit more mindful. I also want to read more books about climate change. I read one last year about climate change and capitalism and how one can't exist without the other. And that was very interesting. And I want to read more books about those kind of things so that I can, you know, take that into my everyday life and do my bit and help help mother nature along and help her thrive and keep us all alive for a little bit longer. So having said that, we're gonna move on to my reading plans for January. Now, I have a bit of an ambitious TBR this month. Uh, it's been very difficult to decide what books I wanna read in January because I have, um, I have a lot of books that I want to get to and there are so many books that I said I was going to read uh, a few months ago that I just still haven't read. So this is another thing as well, another goal of mine actually is to just read every single book that I own that I still need to read because I have been so bad at not reading the books that I own and just going off and reading other things. Um, but yeah, this is, I don't want to say my definitive January TBR, but this is my January priority TBR. These are the books that I will attempt to read in January, depending on how things go, whether things are quite busy with work or not. Like I said, we're closed at the minute, only for a few days. Um, should be back up and running by the time this video goes up. Um, but yeah, depending on how busy things are for me, I might not get all of them read, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, I'm doing uh, Buzzwordathon again this year, hosted by Books and Lala. I will put the information down below for you guys if you want to get involved. Um, and the word for January is the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, so the W's, I uh, can't remember what the proper word for that is. Um, but who, what, where, when, why, or how. And I had a few options for this, but I am going to go with What Lies Between Us by John Mars. I love John Mars. I've read three of his books now, and 
this is going to be the first book that I read in January and I'm very excited. I think it's like a domestic thriller type thing this one. I don't know if it features an affair. Honestly, I don't know anything about this, but I've heard really good things and I've heard that it is one of his best thrillers. Um, so I'm very excited for this. I've had it on my Kindle for ages, so I really need to get to it. And this is the perfect excuse. And then because I was speaking of the library a couple of minutes ago, um, I do have two books that I loaned out from the library earlier um, that I want to read in January. One of them is a bit more of an obscure book for me. It's not one that I would normally pick up, um, but that is 10 minutes 38 seconds in the strange world by Elif Shafak. This is a what is this literary fiction and I believe it is about a woman who has just died and we're kind of like reliving her life um, as she sees it. I guess it's like you know when you're dying and it's that life flashing before your eyes thing. I guess it's kind of like that but yeah it just it just says in the first minute following her death Tequila Layla's consciousness began to ebb slowly and steadily like a tide receding from the shore. And um, I've heard this is one of this author's best books. Um, I know it was shortlisted uh, for the Booker Prize in 2019. And I have seen this around um, quite a lot and people really enjoy it. So this was one that I just kind of picked up on a whim and I'm going to give it a go and see how I get on with that. And then another one that I picked up at the library uh, is The Witcher, um, The Last Wish by, is it Andre Andrzej Sapkowski? Um, so I've been watching The Witcher. Uh, my boyfriend is a huge fan of the game. We watched the first series when it came out a couple of years ago, just finished the second season and it was so good. I've been wanting to read these books for a while now and my library actually had a copy of some of the books not all of them but it had uh this one which is like i think it's like a short story and it's like a prequel to the actual series um but yeah i am gonna give this a go and i'm so excited i know a lot of people are reading the books right now and i just i feel like i'm missing out so uh, I'm definitely going to get to this one in January. And then we have a couple of non-fiction picks here as well. So we've got Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. Is it really a Jess TBR video without a Matt Haig book in it? No. Um, this is like his only non-fiction book that I have not read yet. Um, it's another short one. Um, and this is kind of like, again, it's like a bit like Reasons to Stay Alive, where it's kind of like part memoir and part something else i don't really know um but this is looking at sleep news social media addiction work and play and invites us to feel calmer happier and question the habits of the digital age this book might even change the way you spend your precious time on earth um so yeah looking forward to giving that one a go i love my hague um and then i've got crying in h mart by Michelle Zorna. Uh, this is a memoir and she is an Asian American um, and it just kind of talks about her life growing up um, in America and how she dealt with her mother's high expectations, her relationship with food and Korean food and her and how that's kind of forged her identity and things like that. Um, I've heard incredible things about this. This is the book on Bookstagram that people rave about a lot. Um, and I just, I really want to give it a go. And I'm really fascinated with Korean culture at the moment. Um, so I think this is going to be a very insightful read. And then we're moving back to fiction. Um, so I've got The Sanatorium here by Sarah Pierce. This was one that I was planning to read last November and then just never got round to. This was also one of my five star predictions. Uh, this is a thriller and it's set in the Swiss Alps in a hotel that used to be a sanatorium and it follows like a detective i think she's like going to her brother's engagement party or something and something creepy starts happening this has had a lot of very mixed reviews so i don't know how it's going to go for me but hopefully i love it because it just sounds like something i would love and then i've got night bitch by rachel yoda so this is another one that i hope will be five stars but again 
it's had very mixed reviews and people either love it or they hate it. But I think this is about a woman who is a werewolf, I believe. I think she's just had a child um, and then one night she just starts changing into something uh, supernatural. Um, and uh, this book focuses a lot on womanhood and being a mother. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, but it's one that I'm very intrigued by. The cover also has like a greyhound. It's either a greyhound or a whippet. Either way, my favourite uh, dog breed. Um, so yeah, <laughs> definitely prioritising this one this month. And then the last three that I've got, I don't really know if I will get the chance to get to. They are priorities, but they're not like my priority priorities, like those books. Um, but they have been on my shelves for quite a while. This one has been on my shelf the longest. This is Dracula the Undead by Dacre Stoker and Ian Holt. Uh, this is considered the sequel to Dracula. So Dacre Stoker is a relative of Bram Stoker. I think he's like one of his great grandsons. I don't know how many times removed. Um, but he also wrote uh, Dracul with J.D. Barker, which was like the prequel to Dracula, and that was so good. So I have high expectations for this. I don't know anyone who's read it, um, but this just follows Quincy Harker, is, who is the son of Jonathan and Mina Harker, um, and he ends up at the Lyceum. There is a production of Dracula, and it's directed by Bram Stoker himself, so this is another one that features Bram Stoker. Dracul did feature Bram Stoker as well um and yeah i think it's kind of like about dracula not being dead and he comes back or something but i would like to read this one i love dracula so um i think i think i will get around to this because i'm just i'm intrigued by it and i've had it for ages and I'm really ashamed that I haven't read it yet, so... <laughs> and then we've got uh, The President is Missing by Bill Clinton and James Patterson. This is another one that I'm not really 100% sure about because I've heard very mixed things about it. But um, when I bought this, I was going through that phase where I was very interested in the White House and um, American politics, uh, which is very unlike me because I'm not really... I'm more interested in politics now than I was. Um, but yeah, this is about the president who goes missing, obviously. Um, and there are terrorists that are planning an attack. Um, and there are traitors inside the White House. Uh, and yeah, the president tries to save his people. And I think that involves him going missing. And yeah, I don't know. But we'll see with this one. Um, I'm very intrigued by it as well. Um, I've never read anything by James Patterson, but I don't think he actually writes his books. Correct me if I'm wrong, I heard that somewhere. But yeah, let me know. Um, lastly, we have got We Must Be Brave by Francis Lerdet. Um, So this is a historical fiction book set during World War II. Not my favourite period of history to read books in, if I'm honest. But I'm very interested in this one. The cover is stunning. It is so pretty. Um, but I'm just, I'm in the mood for some historical fiction and I don't know why. This one just has um, winter vibes about it. I don't know if it is set in winter, um, but I know it is set in Southampton um, and a newly married woman finds a girl sleeping um, and she adopts her essentially um and it's about i think it's about like their relationship with each other this woman and this young girl um and how it changes both of their perspectives i don't know i've not heard a lot about this book either but i'm i'm kind of feeling it right now it's not usually a thing with me i don't usually read a lot of historical fiction but i'm in the mood for it so we're gonna go with it Okay guys, so that's my uh, TBR for January. Uh, like I said, pretty ambitious, but I'm excited. I do have um, a challenge for January. And here I was saying that I wasn't going to set myself too many challenges or anything. <laughs> um, but I do have a challenge in January that uh, 
I am planning to do and I'm planning to do a vlog on it so I'm not going to tell you what it is um, but all will be revealed when the vlog goes up probably sometime in February so keep your eye out for that um, but I reckon I could get through the majority of these maybe 80-90% we'll see <laughs> um, but yeah let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them because as always I love to hear what you guys have to say I am going to wrap this video up here thank you so much for watching guys um, I hope you have all had a lovely Christmas I do have my Christmas book haul video uh, going up very soon which I'm very excited about so um, watch out for that as well um, it should be up in the next few days and I hope you all have had a lovely New Year's as well. It's going to be another weird year I reckon but you know we can get through this and we have got our books to help us do that so you know it uh, it could be worse um, but let me know what you're planning to read in January, what you're planning to read in 2022, uh, what your goals are um, and Let's just send some uh, messages of encouragement and support to each other. Um, and yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, please leave a cheeky thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any videos from me. You can also hit the bell button so you will be notified every time I do post. Um, and having said all of that, I will see you all in my next video very soon. Bye guys. I'm gonna have some more wine. Here's to 2022.